Uh, we have the next speaker. We are past three minutes now. So our next speaker is, uh, correct me please if I mispronounce your, nom, your name, Yubica Tomic. Yubica Tomic, yes. Yubica Tomic. Yeah, so Dubita is a jurist and lawyer, managing partner with the TSJ Law uh, from Belgrade. Uh, she's a specialist in mediation, founder of the Belgrade Arbitra Arbitration Center, a member of the Serbian National Association of Mediators, whose purpose is to promote mediation as an alternative to conflict. Lubica will speak on access to justice in times of juridical lockdown. So welcome to Vicha. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be in this solidarity conference as a lawyer, as a practitioner, uh, to participate with you together uh, as we are equal in fears, to share a, a lawyer's fear with you, uh, the a fear related to access to justice and maybe to see afterwards in discussion as just um, introduced whether we can have a positive energy out of this question, whether we have a positive outcome of this moment in which we are, where we have uh, really some deep questions related to access to justice in times of judicial uh, lockdown in our countries. Um, as mentioned, I'm a law practitioner. I'm um, dealing mostly with commercial law, international commercial law. And that will be the perspective that I will come from. But at the end of the day, we will deal with this uh, general question of the right to a fair trial. Uh, I live in a world of international commercial contracts in international networks with international um, community of lawyers. And what happened with the outbreak of the coronavirus was that, of course, obviously all contracts had certain impediments. Um, contracts could not be performed, parties had damages, everything stopped. All around the globe, we as lawyers um, and the people among themselves had the same questions. What happens? What happens to my contract? What happens to the damages I have? Who is liable for these damages? Um, do I have to perform under my contract? To, to which extent do I have to do that if, if there is a coronavirus outbreak? For us, it was very interesting to have at the same time, all around the globe, the exactly same questions from our clients. Um, just, I won't bother you with, with, um, uh, with, with law, many law issues, which at this stage I just have to say. Basically, the answer is in, um, two, um, in two tools that we have as lawyers. One is the, the force majeure, um, and the other is the hardship, the set of hardship rules. Um, and we have certain conventions on international sale contracts where we have also some mechanism to deal with. However, these rules on force majeure, on hardship rules are differently defined in different countries. Um, so you need different preconditions to activate them. And on the other hand, um, those tools in some countries, for example, in, in Serbia, the tool of um, hardship, hardship clause, you can only access um, or you can only terminate your contract uh, by a court decision. By a court decision in times where courts have a lockdown. So what do you do? Coming to the word solidarity, what happened then is that all around the globe, um, lawyers uh, of various international networks came together and we basically all the platforms focused on the same things. We tried to find solutions, practical solutions on, on a 
exactly this issue. We had the same language, we had the same fear, and um, we offered um, online Q&A sessions for clients. Um, and it was free of charge. It was a solidarity act of the, of the networks. And it was a special moment for lawyers because dealing with the same issue at the same time and feeling um, you have no precedence, you, you have to find the answers. In commercial world, even in COVID times, you have to have very quick answers. Um, so there was a solidarity to work together and also to offer some basic information, quick information to the clients. On the other hand, solidarity was also offered in some jurisdictions by the governments where the government said, yes, of course, uh, we see what is the situation. So we will set up a special set of rules. And for example, as you know, in most of the jurisdictions, you don't have to repay your bank loans for a certain period of time. In certain jurisdictions, for example, in Spain, as I know from my colleagues, the state intervened into commercial lease contracts because you had this lockdown of um, shopping malls. So they said, no, you don't have to pay your, your rent. For in Serbia, for example, this was not the case. So we had a lot of um, question related to how do I pay my rent, do I pay it, et cetera, et cetera. However, the states, the governments did not cover all the issues. This is, of course, impossible. And a lot of issues, a lot of questions remained open for the courts to decide, for the courts who are not open for hearings. So the courts didn't close, of course, but in the sense that they were not open for hearings for as we say today, offline hearings, for real-time hearings, um, we had a real challenge because the hearings, except in some special cases, are the substantial part of the court procedure, of the right to be heard, of the right of a fair trial, of the right of access to justice. Um, what happened then is, of course, that um, parties tried to solve their problems without court by negotiations. Negotiations, tolerance and mediation, if negotiations without mediation would not succeed. Where um, I can support, so even in, in lawyers' frames we had sort of a positive energy, um, sort of a um, climate where you know you have to solve the problem, you have to be positive, you have to be creative. But when we talk about mediation and negotiation, this does not solve the issue of our right to access to justice um, and a fair trial, because there will always be issues that you have to um, have solved by a court or an arbitration, if you have agreed to an arbitration. The um, official guide on the European Convention on Human Rights, and Article 6, which is of essence, if we talk about the right to court, says that, yes, the right to court can be uh, subject to some implied limitations. But this guide, of course, gives um, types of limitations that are of such quality that they, they do not hurt uh, the very essence of the right to, 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 to a court. And what the guide says is parliamentary immunity, procedural rules, so if you have some special rules to, to, um, to second instance, etc. requirements of enforcement of a previous decision. But no, we don't find a virus among um, the reasons not to have the right to access the court. We don't find it, of course, in the guide of European um, 
Convention on Human Rights. We have never experienced this before, as we know, and um, we have an unforeseeable event. We have an event where we have the fragility of the whole humanity and, of course, the fragility of the judicial system at table. There is an international association of judges and uh, it's an apolitical um, organization. They call themselves a pillar of solidarity among judges and towards um, the fellow citizens. And um, in April this year, so at, at the peak, so to say, um, they gave out a warning. I will give you some words from that warning saying, the government should not be tempted to perceive the present crisis as an opportunity to overlook the essential role of independent courts as guardians of human rights and civil liberties. COVID-19 has created damaging repercussions in court activities across all countries around the world. The efforts to slow the spread of COVID have massively impacted the functioning of the justice system. Most of the judicial cases are or will be inevitably deferred or even paralyzed. So what happens next? What is the answer? What was the answer? In some jurisdictions, also in some um, arbit institutional arbitrations, rules were introduced for online virtual hearings. So you could have, like we have now on Zoom, a court hearing. How do we deal with that? Is that possible? Is that good? Is it not? Um, justice delayed is justice denied, they say. So we have to be timely in, 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 in reacting to, to claims. Um, but we have also to be fair in court hearings. Just before, as it was that I for me not to forget to mention, I tried a few times to come into Zoom and then I had internet interruptions and I fell out. And just for a second, imagine this was a court hearing and I was a witness or I had something important to say or I uh, wanted to interrupt myself because I didn't know the answer to your question. Um, in Serbia, there was an attempt to, to introduce virtual hearings. Uh, it lasted for three days and it was cut for several reasons. Uh, one of them being there was no technical support for it, but also some um, legal issues related to very old civil procedures, which do not foresee many things as just I mentioned things that can happen in online hearings that you don't have in court hearings in the courtroom. Some other jurisdictions were um, more prepared maybe technically and they introduced, um, introduced online hearings but then again there you have the problem of, of procedures and, and of the question is it always applicable. Um, there is a um, Court decision uh, of the TCC Technology and Construction Court um, of the 20th of April, and um, it is considered that this judgment gives type of a guide how to assess whether you can have a case in virtual hearings or not. They say, um, in any case, um, the courts must be prepared for online hearings. And um, there is to be a recognition to the extent to which disputes can be resolved. So not all disputes can be resolved, but some can. And there is this inter interesting part saying that um, there has to be an exact examination of the possibility of a remote hearing. 
And only upon such detailed examination, um, the court um, can accept maybe not to have a virtual hearing. So the, the, the logic is the other way around, not we, we, we have to um, access whether to have um, a virtual hearing, it's even a step more. You have to examine um, why wouldn't you have a, 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 um, a virtual hearing. Of course, uh, it, this decision also confirms that virtual hearings are case specific, so in each and every case it has to be assessed. Um, I haven't experienced online hearings. As I said, in my country, it is not possible and I haven't had a chance to have an arbitration online so far, arbitration hearing online so far. Uh, based on a common sense, it, 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 it is fundamentally different, hardly comparable. And the essence is um, not whether it's comparable, but to which extent we have to look at both sides and safeguard the right to a fair trial. Because the right to a fair trial is also the right to a timely, um, to a timely trial, which would lead you to a, to a virtual a hearing. But also the right to a fair trial is a right to a fair trial in a procedural sense where you don't have Zoom interruptions, for example. Um, in the world of arbitration, uh, which is a more flexible world, uh, and on arbitration the parties have to agree upon, of course they can also agree in the moment when the conflict arises, um, uh, they have gone a little bit further, so the ICC in Paris um, has uh, issued in April a guidance note on possible measures aimed to mitigating the effects of COVID pandemic and dealing with online hearings. Um, in this um, guidance, you, have, you can have a virtual hearing uh, without party agreement and even over party objection. Of course, the arbitrators are called in this um, guidance to be aware that when they make the decision, this decision at the end of the day has to be enforceable and it is enforceable in each and every country of the, of the New York Convention um, only if it safeguards also the right to a fair trial. Uh, if not, it for surely does um, interfere with the public order. So um, we live in this tension between timely and fair. And I think this tension is something new. Timely and fair was always one thing in arbitral and court procedures. And I feel for the first time, timely and fair has a tension in between. And we have to see how to harmonize those two things in each particular case, of course. And the second um, question for me, so the first issue is this new tension and the second new issue would be um, a certain temptation for the whole lawyer's world, but I would say also for the humanity. The temptation um, to continue with virtual hearings for some economic reasons, even in after Corona times. How about that? What do we think about that? What do we think about access to, access to justice online? I don't have the answers, but I'm very happy to be with uh, such a distinguished uh, uh, audience today. And uh, I'm very interested to hear, uh, especially uh, from non-lawyers, your um, thoughts about this uh, introduction for our discussion. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, we have uh, about 25 minutes for questions. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. 
So um, are there questions from the public? Yeah, Mirna, please. Yes, thank you very much, Ljubica, for this fantastic talk. Uh, it's very uh, opening, actually, eye-opening to hear how in your profession you have to really decide things in real time. You cannot wait. In our profession of teaching, we have had some talks uh, about that. So we also have to make some decisions. How will be the next school year? And we are discussing in our small world this, how is it the same thing to take a class online or to take it in person? Mm -hmm. okay. And yesterday there was a talk which was warning us exactly against the fact that for economic reasons, the universities might decide to continue forever. And we have all found this very shocking. Now imagine if this is actually in your world, your world is, has, you know, dire consequences. If, if things are not done right, that really has dire consequences. People can end up completely uh, outside of the system if, this is happening. I think it's a very hard problem. I have no solutions to propose, but it's just very, uh, I'm sort of shocked to think of how hard this problem yeah. is. And it's very, I think it is, um, it is very comparable with, with online teaching. I have two kids, one is um, in high school, one is in faculty. She's, she's learning liter literature, world well, literature here in Belgrade, my daughter. And um, she was missing very much her lectures. They had online lectures, of course, but some things you cannot do online. Some eyes you cannot see online. I, I don't know whether you know um, that somebody told me, I don't know where it is, but in Zoom, you have an option to, um, I don't know how to, to say, to, to refine your face so you would be prettier. It's actually on, so there is an option, you can turn that on and, and you look fresh. I mean, in court hearings, it is very important to see if somebody lies or not, to see whether he blushes or not, to he see whether he is tired or not. So um, I think in many other professions also. And um, of course, I... I um, dare to say maybe I'm old fashioned and, and, and meanwhile old to, to have this fear of online. But I think, I mean, online and uh, electronic tools can be used in so many wonderful ways to speed up the things um, that, that do not depend on this personal chemistry that we have between ourselves. So even before COVID times, for example, the ICC, they had, um, the rules about electronic support for arbitration. It was not used. That's interesting. Not many, you don't use in many cases. And they now say that for these uh, tools, the COVID has done more than, I don't know how many articles and, and seminars held before. So this is the positive thing. I'm just here talking about the hearings. So of course, if I have something to write to you, um, writing an email, will be more efficient than um, writing and sending in it by DHL. But uh, if we have to have specific communication, which is if we come back to, to, to court hearings, also for hundreds of years kept in certain procedural rules, can we really overcome time just by finding um, a technical solution? We have to, time is inevitable. Time is a part of, 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 of our lives, souls, and, 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 and procedures. In law, it's actually time is part of the procedures. So it's very seldom that you have a solution and then afterwards you have the legal procedure for it. In history, it was the other way around. The other way around. Yeah, so that, that's, that's where we where we have our, our issues and um, it will be very, very interesting. On the other hand, I have also to say, lawyers are happy to be, to be able to work. That's what, what, we, what we do. We, we, sometimes this is the only solution to have an online hearing. For example, in, I live in Belgrade here in Serbia where I am right now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had uh, good situation with COVID, but in the last two weeks, 
it's rising again. So we have again um, big numbers of, of daily new um, ill people, infected people. Uh, and a few days ago, and the courts, the courts opened. Uh, meanwhile, the courts opened in May, mid of May. But interestingly, now um, you have the call from your colleagues saying, um, "Look." there is somebody in my office who is infected. I, I wouldn't before I have the results of my test. In Serbia, you wait for the results a few days. I wouldn't come to the court hearing if I don't have the results. And the judge says, of course you don't. So everybody's fine with that. So there is a solidarity based on that. But you have to keep in mind, there are people's rights behind this hearing that we postpone. And that we postpone for good reasons, for health reasons, it's also uh, right. But um, the fear for our health uh, comes now for us lawyers, uh, or for all people, it will come with time as the fear of access to justice. Yes. There is a question from Giselle. She asked, can we imagine that the process, processes such as the international uh, uh, CPI, so International uh, Crime Court, could be happening online? I'm not an expert in, in criminal law. The um, um, interesting thing is that in Serbia, so I, I couldn't imagine it. Um, in, in, in Serbia, um, I said, I mentioned that they tried to introduce for a very short time um, online hearings and it, it was in a few days. It related only to criminal cases as um, one thought this is of um, urgent, of a, as an urgent matter. But again, uh, in such cases, um, the rights to be preserved, the right to freedom, right to live, uh, uh, is also a very essential uh, right. So I'm, I'm not sure that in this case-to-case -case, um, assessment, uh, the result could be positive, but we will see. Merci, thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. 